The open source latency testing tool that I've been building and developing for almost a year now has just had a major update. Something I've been working on for months and I'm really excited to show you what's new here. I have not one, not two, not even three, but four new features to show you. Yeah, I've been busy. The first and most obvious is something that I've already hinted at including, which is the ability to pre-test your system's latency to subtract it from a game's latency and results. This is great as it helps you isolate the game from your system and means especially if you're a reviewer who's quoting these figures, you're reporting the game's latency, not just your whole system's latency. Of course, things like the game's settings will affect the latency too, and what sort of performance you're getting in the game, but it at least gives you the option. Now, it isn't perfect, as all light-based measurements are subject to the monitor's refresh rate, and what I'm doing is subtracting the average on-display latency from your system to each of the results. There will still be some variability from the display's refresh rate window there, but it should give you a good idea of what's going on in the game. Let me show you how that new setting works. On the desktop app, you'll find two new buttons for this. The pretest toggle in the test settings area and the run pretest button up top. If you want the pretest data to be included in your game testing, you will need to hit the run pretest button first before opening any other games. You can then strap the sensor to the display, and once the DirectX window opens, you'll need to wait for the FPS counter at the top left to be reading around about 1000 FPS, and then hit the button on the sensor. You let it run, it will close itself, and then you'll see up at the top in the status message, it now says pretest data saved. You can then switch to the, the pretest toggle on and uh, launch whatever game of choice you fancy and test away. You can still use the F10 hotkey to start and stop the test in the game, or you can just alt tab and click the start and stop button instead if you'd rather. Once you've tested your game, you'll get the results viewer with all of the data you've collected, and you'll see the on-display latency has the system latency, saved as the frame time, removed. Now, sticking with game testing, one of the most requested features was the ability to swap from mouse clicks to mouse movement. The idea here is that mouse clicks, say for firing a gun in game, often includes an animation delay, which can add somewhat artificial and inconsistent latency to your inputs. Also, not all games have an obvious mouse click action that would register as a significant change for the light sensor, so why not just move the mouse instead? Well, now you do need to be careful, uh, or at least a bit careful with this sort of test mode, as you'll need to line up the camera with a sharp edge, ideally something dark with something considerably brighter next to it that the camera can move to. As an example, I use the training mode in Rainbow Six Siege, lining up the camera with the dark edge of this dark box, and then I've got the mouse action set to move the camera left to the much brighter wall that's right next to it. Then I just hit the button and let it take as many samples as I fancy. It does move the mouse cursor back to where it started, so it is repeatable, you can do as many moves as you like. One thing that you might notice here is just how little the camera is moving. As much as I would like this to be you know, a controllable option and as much as you like, this is the maximum that the board can do, at least right now. If you find you need more of a difference, more movements, you want to head to your game settings and bump up the mouse sensitivity until you are happy with the amount of motion you're getting. You'll find the whole mouse click or mouse movement uh, setting in the test settings area, and you have three options there. Left click, move the mouse left, or move the mouse right. As a side note, by the way, I technically added an extra feature here, which is that the processing now works for light to dark transitions as well. So if it ends up being easier for you to test, say, looking at a light area and moving to a darker one, 
that's going to work now too. Okay, moving away from game testing to mouse and keyboard testing, this has been quite the ride for me. What started as a, an innocent suggestion led to a full month of testing, programming, and outright confusion. I'll stick a time code on the screen somewhere here if you want to jump ahead uh, past the, the technical stuff here, but this has given me way too many grey hairs to not explain. In short, the way that this test works is relatively simple. The board reads the analog data from the microphone, waiting to hear a sharp spike. There's a whole detection thing I set up for that, taking a baseline measurement and then adding 80% of the difference between the baseline and the maximum possible value. Uh, but once it sort of hears a sound that's loud enough to get past that threshold, it then enters into a loop waiting for the desktop program to tell it that it has received a click or a key press. The desktop app has a low level mouse or keyboard hook running that as soon as Windows receives the key down or mouse click down events, it fires back to the board to say that it's received that click. Now, that description includes some of the changes that I've made here, namely the low level hooks. Previously, I was using the WinForms mouse down and key down events, which turned out to be a little unreliable, especially the mouse down one. I ran tests where the board itself did the clicking and then waited for the response, and I was getting results just all over the place, like six millisecond swings kind of mad. Here's the graph for that data. It's, it's not pretty. So swapping to the low level hooks solved that problem. The other problem was the Ciro bus had a hard floor of one millisecond. That was the smallest timeout that I could use. But that meant that every result was at least one millisecond, which isn't great for anything higher than a thousand hertz peripherals. Happily, I think I've solved that problem too, or at least I've improved it greatly. It turns out that there is an Arduino serial function called read bytes until, which will exit out once that condition is met, skipping the rest of the timeout window. So for the click test, I now use that to wait for the, the single char to come back, and it now returns well under, uh, now returns in well under one millisecond. I'm not sure if you'll get a NORT 1.25 millisecond result with an 8000 Hz mouse, but it's going to be a lot closer now, and it's about as good as I can get without significant additional hardware changes. So in short, the test is now significantly more accurate, uses low level mouse and keyboard hooks, and can now report sub millisecond results. To use the new method, it's pretty much the same process as before, although you'll notice that there are now separate entries for mice and keyboards in the test source selection. That's because if I register the low level hooks at the same time for both mouse and keyboard, it would likely mess with the results, so I've separated them out. Once you start the test, you'll notice that the text box is gone. That's because the low level hooks don't actually need you to you know, save what you're typing in any way. It just registers that you've pressed the key or the key down event and then fires off its action. Technically, you don't even need the desktop app as the focused app, the, the you know, primary app that you're selected, but it is probably best if you just leave it as, as is. When you get the results, you'll notice they now have decimal places which uh, is kind of a fun thing to add. And if you have a fast enough mouse, you should see sub millisecond results. And the final feature is part of that same peripherals test. If you want the ultimate accuracy, you can now solder the two pin uh, fly leads directly to your mouse or keyboards switch and use this two pin input to trigger the test. That replaces the need for the microphone as the trigger, and because it takes the signal from the switch itself, rather than listening for the sound of clicking, it should be more accurate. If I'm honest, I don't expect many people to do this, but there is now the option if you want it. I think that is about it for now. I expect you'll have plenty 
of questions and suggestions, so please do jump on our Discord or leave them in a GitHub issue that will be linked in the description. I'll do my best to get back to you there. This update should be live already, so if you already have a unit, it should prompt you to update the next time you open the desktop app, both of the desktop app itself and the board's firmware. If you don't have an OSRTT or an OSLTT unit yet, head to osrtt.com slash osltt and pick one up. I still have a handful of units left from the second batch and I'll be building another wave fairly soon too. Of course, if you want to support this kind of literally open source development, but you don't necessarily want or need one of these tools, you can just watch these videos, subscribe and just stay up to date on them, or you can support directly through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs I made myself, or there's also a load of other affiliate links in the description that don't cost you anything extra to use, but do help me out when you use them. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you haven't been following this open source latency testing tool project and you want to learn a bit more, I'll leave the full playlist on the end cards if you're interested. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it really. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, like I said, uh, Discord or GitHub is probably the best places to reach me, uh, but feel free to leave them in the comments as well if you fancy. And otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.